Wait a minute. Okay. This is the edition Unfiltered Podcast. Welcome to the first episode of Unfiltered. I hope you're just as excited as I am. My name is Jill and I will be your host for the rest of this podcast. Now, um, without any further ado, I'm going to just jump right into our word of the podcast. And this week, it's going to be Kiki Wiki. Yeah, you heard that right. <laughs> your ears are not ringing. It's Kiki Wiki, spelled K-I-C-K-Y dash W-I-C-K-Y. Now, this word was coined by Shakespeare in All is Well that ends well, and it was used as a pet name for a wife or a girlfriend. Google told me that this word is most likely modeled on the word Kixi Winzy. Now, this word is spelled K-I-C-K-S-E-W dash W-I-N-S-E-Y. And it's an earlier 16th century word for anything whimsical or fantastic. So we actually have two words today, Kiki Wiki and Kixi Winzy. Now, can you for a second just imagine yourself in the middle of a very serious conversation and just saying this word? So next time you're in an argument, remember to say this. And I'm just going to add this into our conversation today. And our conversation is going to be about 2020. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you can come out from under the blanket. We're just going to talk about it. We're not going to relive it again. So don't worry. It's not been an easy ride for a lot of you out there. And it hasn't been for me, but it's quite, it's been quite interesting, actually. I spent most of the lockdown in India by myself and it was amazing actually really amazing. I've never been by myself in India before. I've been there a couple of times with my parents, but I was just a tail. I didn't really do anything I wanted to. I just followed my parents around, which is what most of us do. So this was really liberating for me. I grew a lot. I learned a lot of things and I did things I never thought I could. I met a lot of people from different backgrounds, different perspectives. I've never come across people of such different age ranges and they just saw the world a different way than I did. And I got to see that and understand why. But the lockdown was devastating for so many people over there. There's actually one really sad story that I have. It was just a street food place that I visited a lot while I was there. And they had these delicious egg dishes. Unfortunately, because of the lockdown, it had to shut down. And the owners of this place put everything they had in building it and I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it's a small restaurant in a small uh, town, so it wasn't making millions before this, but it was making enough to, to get by. And the lockdown just made this completely impossible for even to get by. So they had to, they had to shut down. They had no other option. And it's heartbreaking that this isn't just one story. It's one story out of a thousand. But with the vaccination in and everything almost going back to normal. There is a ray of hope at the end of this very dark tunnel that 2020 was. And as a very wise emperor in Mulan said, a flower that booms, blooms, booms. Wow. Ruin that saying. I'm going to try that again. A flower that blooms in diversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. You can tell I still struggle saying that. I'm not going to try that again because I, I think twice an embarrassment is embarrassment enough but nine months in India I learned a new language and I can now speak Hindi fluently I feel like I sound like a local my friends may disagree but they don't know what they're talking about so just take my word for it did anyone else get a one direction flashback from there I know you directioners know what I'm talking about they don't know what I'm talk talk talking about wow I'm just contradicting myself right there but you know what I'm saying anyway I apologize for your ears they probably led by my singing. Anywho, I definitely recommend traveling alone. It can really be eye-opening and life-changing. You have to rely on yourself. You get to make the decisions you want to make. You get to see places you want to see. So you're basically navigating your place in the world. I know it's going to take a while before we can openly travel. So whenever that time comes, I hope you guys take it complete advantage of that and just throw a dart on the map and go wherever that dart takes you to because you will not regret it I promise you I can actually get a tattoo saying you will not regret it you know no regrets hashtag movie reference I cannot believe I just did that I hope you guys know what movie I'm talking about if you do know what movie I'm talking about please do tweet me let's see if you know your movies 
that's going to be quite interesting to see the kind of movies I get back. But 2020, again, <laughs> it's been a roller coaster. Actually, no, wait. I think roller coaster is, is, is wrong to use here. I think it's been a treadmill for all of us. And when I say treadmill, it's like, you know, you, you're getting on the treadmill and you're moving. You're running and you're moving. And time is passing by, but at the end of it, you're exactly where you started. And I'm hoping this year is going to be kixy wixy for all of you and that you never have to fight over toilet paper again. Now, speaking of toilet paper, I am still scratching my brain over this. Somebody needs to break this down for me. What was the overlap between COVID and toilet paper? What was it? I don't see it. I think I've read over a thousand articles, actually not a thousand articles. I'm being generous for what we call memes and I don't get it. I just, I don't understand what the race for toilet paper was. It's not, it wasn't going anywhere. There was no need to have a toilet paper fight. I would think you'd fight over masks or you'd fight over sanitizer, but toilet paper? Oh, what a world we live in. So if you know what is the reason or you have um, a theory as to why we fought over toilet paper, please do let the rest of us know so we, we don't have to keep scratching our brains out because I want to know. I really want to know. And I, I know there's a lot of you out there who want to know. I've had this discussion with my friends and we've gotten nowhere with it. We just end up looking at memes and then more memes and then we're down a slippery slope just looking at memes for three hours. And we've just left the behind this discussion of toilet paper. So that's pointless. All right. Now, getting off that treadmill, pun intended, where in the world are we going today? Kenya. That's where we're going today. It's a country in East Africa on the equator. It has the Indian Ocean as its coastline. The capital city is Nairobi. National language is English and Swahili. English because it used to be a British colony and Swahili because obviously that's the national language there. Hakuna Matata is the most common and well-known phrase that's Swahili. The current president is Uhuru Kenyatta and the currency used there is Kenyan shillings. Now that we got over the facts of Kenya, I want to tell you something that Kenya can give you where an experience. So... Kenya is known for its big five. Now, the big five consists of big, the big five animals in Kenya. One of them being the African elephant, the African lion, the buffalo, the rhino, black and white, and the leopard. You can get close encounters with them in Masai Mara. There is also a great rift valley, which was created by the Earth's splitting force 20 million years ago. You can actually see... The divide that's happening it's it's breathtaking if not the least there are a number of other different there that will really take your breath away and if you're interested in visiting it's really easy there are a number of different visas that you can get i usually think that the east african visa is the best option because it allows you access to the bordering countries as well which is uganda and rwanda and you can apply for them online they're really easy to get there's no hassle, red tape, none of that. You can just apply for it and you'll get it before you even arrive at your destination. And there are countless of budget airlines that will get you there. The cheapest ticket that I've seen that flies from the States to Kenya is around $600 return. And that in December, which is usually peak season. So I think that's a really good deal. If you keep your eye out, it's something that you can get really cheap for. And when you get there, the food is Oh my God. I don't think there are words to describe how delicious the food is there. Now, the local delicacy is very simple. It's just a maize meal called ugali, which is served with beans or green leaves, which are steamed. And it's called sukuma wiki. There's also a lot of different foods from all around the world. You have Lebanese food there, Chinese food there, Mexican food there. Japanese food there. Honestly, I don't think you will ever be short of options when it comes to food. And I know food is a really important part of traveling and you'll get everything you want and you will be completely satisfied craving for more. I promise you. There's even, I mean, if you're not even looking to eat 
outside, there's so many options that you can get from fresh fruits and vegetables. Pineapples there are juicy and they're just like you take a bite off of them and there's like juice like drooling down your mouth. I don't think drooling was the right word to describe that, but at least it paints a picture. <laughs> the avocados, oh my God, they're so cheap. You can get an avocado for 10 cents. One avocado is 10 cents. They're just as good as they are here. I mean, even better. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and look at some of the questions on, on Google about Kenya. Okay, so obviously the main question, I, I'm pretty sure most of you already have it, is it, is it a safe country? And yes, the answer is yes, it's a safe country. I mean, you know, when you go, let's just take, for example, Chicago. When you go down to Chicago, it's, it's pretty safe. You're not going to get in trouble. But if you go into one of the dodgy parts of Chicago, then, yeah, you're putting yourself at risk. And it's the same thing that's applied here. If you, if you go to a dodgy area where you know there's going to be a lot of, you know, shooting and everything just just avoid it so the most part of kenya is not like that the capital city in fact is quite the opposite there are so many fancy restaurants high five high five high really expensive hotels there are five star hotels kempinski is there the hilton is there so all these hotels won't be located where they are if it wasn't safe and um for those of you traveling you're obviously not I know you're not going to find yourself in parts like that. So, yes, it's completely safe. All right, what is Kenya famous for? So, like I mentioned before, it's famous for its wildlife. There's no wildlife there like there is in Kenya. I mean, sure, South Africa, they all have it, but it's a different experience, both of them. And it's also known for its runners, which is what, you know, I've seen a lot of movie references mention Kenyan runners. Okay, the next question is, do they speak English in Kenya? I feel like I've already answered that question, so I'm not going to go back to it. Who is the most beautiful girl in Kenya? <laughs> All right, that's a weird question to have. I think everyone is beautiful, so I'm also not going to answer that question. Yeah, that, that's really cliche of me to say, but I am I stand by it. Which Kenyan tribe is good in bed? All right, okay, I think this is a slippery slope from here. But I think those, I've covered most of the questions that are there. But I would like to say this. If you guys ever have the opportunity to go to Kenya, just take the chance and you will just be awe-inspired. You'll be completely taken aback by how wrong information that there is out there that's in the media. Completely contradicting to what you will experience in Kenya. But yeah, that's it for me today. Before I sign out, I really do want us to have this activity. I want you guys to tweet me, DM me, send me a post, write me an email, anything that you can with the words that we learned today, which were Kiki Wiki and Kixie Wixy. <laughs> Let's see how creative you guys can get. Hopefully you won't be as terrible as I was. Clearly, I think it's safe to say I'm not creative at all, but I really hope you guys can be you know, beat me to this. We'll, we'll see who gets the most creative one next week. And anything constructive you have to say, anything you guys want to talk about, like I said, you name it, we'll talk about it. Any topics that you feel need to be unfiltered, let me know and we'll talk about it. And for you to be able to let me know, I have to give you my social medias. All right. Okay, so bear with me. It's a long list because we are spoiled with choice of social medias we can join. So... The first and the most important one is the website. And here you can email me and get in contact with me. The website is unfilteredforyou.com. So the four is the number four and the U is the letter U. So unfilteredforyou.com. And also, if you go head on to the website, you can sign up to my monthly jams, which I will be sending you every month filled with all the news and a little taste of my music. Not very mainstream, but I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. All right, now we move on to Twitter is where you can tweet at me and slide into my DMs, I guess. No, wait, that's for Instagram. Tweet at me. <laughs> so here it's at underscore unfiltered for you. So again, the four is a number and the U is a letter. Instagram, now here is where you can slide into my DMs would be unfiltered for you. Facebook, again, unfiltered for you. It's a page, so that'd be fine. And 
yeah, let me know everything that I asked for for you to let me know. And I'm going to remind you what it is. So we have to do word of the podcast. So I want to hear back your sentences with the word of the podcast, Kiki Wiki or Kixie Wixie. And then the movie. I want to see the guesses that you guys have to say. Yes, until next time. And our next episode is going to be about expectations. And I'm sure every single one of you has felt the pressure of having expectations or the hurt of having expectations or having had expectations on you. Well, this is, I'm not going to get into it. This is something we're going to talk about next time. So I'm going to leave you guys to it. Go ahead, get in touch with me. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say. I know I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. While you're also letting me know all these things, I want you to let me know what topic you want to get down and candid with, anything and everything. Like I said, we're open to it all. That's it for this episode. I'm excited to unfilter with you guys again soon. Until then, bye.